Okay, it's time. It's time for some real talk, some retro FPS real talk. Let's talk about negativity towards retro FPS. Let's talk about haters. You think I'm a hater? You think I've been dedicated to Quake for over 20 years because I hate retro FPS? You think that I ran a prominent Quake review site and reviewed Quake in Unreal levels for the planet sites because I hate retro FPS? You think I did, that I did a shitload of speed runs for old school shooters because I hate retro FPS? You think that I've recently got back into Quake 2 for fun because I hate retro FPS? You think that I made 10 Quake single player levels in a fucking year because I hate retro FPS? You don't think. That's the fucking problem. You look at someone critiquing a game and you don't get that they're critiquing not because they hate retro FPS, but because they love them. Or rather, they want to love them. If any of them are actually true to the retro FPS concept. Let's be fucking clear about this. Myself and others. We love the concept. We want to see retro FPSs that blend the direct controls, the visceral action, the fast-paced violence, the gritty atmospheres, creative settings, exciting designs, strong bestiaries and captivating exploration of old school shooters with some modern production values and some modern options. We are the true target audience and almost everyone out there making these games is missing that fucking target and spewing out shit which takes only a couple of those features, usually the fast base action alone, and ruins that with crap settings, crap themes and a so-called old school feel that's almost entirely based around the limitations and crudity of that era rather than the actual quality. There's a few exceptions and you should know who they are and if you don't you need to get a fucking grip. So why pick on Ultra Kill? Because after that negativity that isn't real, let's turn to some positivity that isn't actually real. Because it seems the shitter these retro FPSs are, the more the devs, or dev usually, seem to be able to bribe or persuade or program or hire a bunch of dribbling cretins to spunk out jizz fountains of undeserved praise. God knows how this happens. Just look at this fucking drivel. Overwhelmingly positive from 2000 fake reviews. Overwhelming fucking horseshit more like. Quake meets Doom. Have they ever played either of these? Quake aesthetics? Jesus fucking balls. And in case you might think there's any element of honesty to this. The top quote is the dev's actual description of the game. The bottom quotes are a bunch of shills. Maybe they've been given a copy of the game for their work, the poor sods. Rehashing the description and catchphrases like they've been told to or programmed to or what fucking ever. The point is, this game and others of its ilk dusk I'm looking at you although not looking too closely because I haven't got my anti-bullshit welding master hand is clearly objectively terrible and is marketed with outright lies about what it's pretending to be that much is obvious and can be swiftly ignored the fanboy shilling around it fucking hell that's another level it's disturbing and bewildering and even though it's clearly a load of shite slightly worrying that anyone could believe it or that these heaps of retro dung could get any more attention based on it this is pretty much the death of the retro FPS we all wanted. There are a few promising games out there for sure. Wrath is genuinely good and true retro FPS. Proteus actually has had the devs talking about level design, a novel idea that most of these games just seem to ignore. Graven, despite its pixels, has a great atmosphere and harmony of style. There might be more, but they're overwhelmed by the ceaseless tide of overhyped retro pixel just like Quake Diarrhea. It's a scene in a genre that it's now best to stay well away from until those few tarnished nuggets float to the top of it. Anyway, let's get back to Ultra Shill and a few things I missed last time. The PTSD was warping my brain and senses. So here's some more footage so it can warp yours too, you poor buggers. So here we go. It's this bollocks again. The things flickering in and out of view. Starting, I don't know whether this will continue a game or what, but points need to be made. Here we go, ultra kill, yeah, whatever. Okay, so I, I start, yeah, puts me right with the shotgun, so be it. So, where was I? So many things. What is this bollocks on the right? style shooter or something they call it. I don't need to be graded, I don't need to be rated. I don't do this for fucking points, I do it for fun. It's 
distracting. So in the way, you're really going to concentrate on getting multiple kills or limb shots or whatever while you're actually fight playing the game. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that before. Great smoke effect coming out of the wall. These hideous checkpoint things. Horrible. Um, so you might notice something. <coughs> what else? Don't have a problem with checkpoints themselves. You may notice something about the enemies. This is an alright room. Why the hell they couldn't do more like this? I'll, I'll mention the rooms in a moment. Once I've dealt with these goons. Oh, well. What else? Can't be asked. Arp, arp, arp. Um, enemies! Where are they? Fuck knows. They're just teleporting out of thin air. They're not loitering, they're not lurking, they're not patrolling. Quake had patrolling enemies 24 years ago. This Quake-like game. There's no sense that the enemies are there. There's no sense that there's a world they're in. It's an empty room and suddenly just things just spawn. Sure, teleporting is a valid way of enemies appearing, but not all the fucking time. Make it look like something's going on. Make it look like they're living in this world. Who knows? Give them some fucking AI. Another thing you'll notice about this. I said before, movement and stuff is okay. They got that right. Exploded, destructive. What is that bollocks? I don't want to pay attention to that. I pay attention to the shooting. So, it's room, corridor, room, corridor. Where's the exploration? Where's the interconnectivity? Get out of my fucking face. Up, up, up. Where's the design? Where's the creativity? In the layouts. Where is the interest in exploring this place that Quake managed in episode 1, map 1, 24 fucking years ago? <laughs> yeah, some bits. Some bits are quite nice. Why they have these delicate smoke effects? And then all those spots where they have it, is that they've kind of got like... They've got the normal pixelation and these kind of like fake metapixels. That sort of giant... No idea what that's all about. So yes, yeah, smoke effects, coloured lightings, fake me mecha metapixels. Here we go, teleporting in again. Get out of my fucking and yes, more rooms, room corridor room. It's, you know, some of these do have a style to it. It doesn't really have any atmosphere. It doesn't really have any sense of purpose to it. What's it supposed to be? Why is it supposed to be? Why am I bothering? Why does this not relate to any of the other enemies? And then that you get these colours. This is this is not Quake. This is not Doom 2016. It may be Devil May Cry, but I'd be surprised given that's got to five five games in the series. Yeah. Thing is, I get it. I get it. This is just a demo. It's just a demo. But a demo is supposed to demonstrate what the game's actually like. Ugh, get out of my fucking way. 
I think the problem is this game it demonstrates it all too well R.I. fucking P. Retro FPS's. I'm out. I'm out of here.